Welcome to our podcast. This is Friends on Fire. I'm Mike. I'm a lifelong devotee of financial independence. I even wrote a book about it. And I'm Maggie, a newer convert, but just as passionate, especially on the intersection of minimalism and financial independence. We're one in the same. We are two like-minded friends who believe that talking about money with your friends and family opens the door to financial well-being. The Friends on Fire podcast is about dispelling myths, building financial acumen, and sharing your financial independence journey with the people you care about. This is Friends on Fire. Hey, Mike. Hey, Maggie. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. I'm a little sad right now. Why are you sad? Today was a special day for me, and you did not acknowledge it in any way. Um, you got no idea? Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's your birthday. It's not my birthday, but it's another special day. Um, I don't think it's your anniversary. No, my wedding anniversary was Monday, actually. Yes. Thank you for celebrating that, though. <laughs> Thank you for acknowledging that, though. <laughs> um, today, uh, what is it today? Today is... How do we know each other? Through okay, I'll work? just tell you. It's my 13th year work anniversary today. 13. How the hell was I supposed to know that? Maggie? I have no idea. I don't, honestly, I was shocked my boss knew it. I got a text from him this morning. Uh, it kind of woke me up, honestly, uh, wishing me a happy 13th anniversary. And I was like, that's no way to celebrate it by waking me up too early on a Friday morning. Well, you know, like he gets automatic email notifications about it, right? I know. He said he happened to like log in the HR system and it reminded him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but 13 years, that's like the longest relationship I've had in my entire life. My first marriage only lasted 10 years. So 13 years is a long time. 13 years is longer than I've been working, period. Oh, you're just a baby. I know I am. I'm so old. Uh, anyways, just thought you'd want to wish me a happy work anniversary. Happy Thanks. 13th work anniversary. I yeah. mean, and it's Friday the 13th, which is kind of cool. Get it? Like, it's not the 13th on the date, but it's Friday. And it's my 13th. So it's like Friday the 13th. Okay, let's move on. Yes. What are we talking about today, Maggie? We're Speaking of work, speaking of work, this is actually a good time. I didn't even plan this segue. Work can be, especially now, life, work, everything else can be incredibly draining, incredibly exhausting. I think we're all dealing with probably peaks of, of emotional and physical and everything else uh, stress on our lives and in our systems lately. And self-care is always an important thing, but I think it's more important now than ever. And so we want to talk about self-care and more importantly, how self-care doesn't have to cost a lot of money or really any money. And I feel like this is a very like, female centric episode. Well, here's why. Yeah. I don't think I, that's true, I, but, no, but I'd well, love I, to hear why you mansplain to me why this is a female centric. That is topic. not Go I was not it. about to mansplain <laughs> something to you. I'm just kidding. But when I like saw this topic um in our show outlines, the first thing that came to mind was like this is only something that women talk about. Like men I'm not going to talk about like shaving my legs. So, what do you think what yeah, do you think's so on men, this list? Men this is not something that men typically talk about discuss with each other yeah. yes however i think though like as i was preparing for this episode i realized that a lot of these things i do you totally do i totally yeah. do and i think a lot of guys do things in their own way they just don't talk about it in the way that i think women talk about it and so if you are a dude listening to this episode i would encourage you to to keep listening. Exactly. Because I will share some like dude self-care thoughts. Okay. I like it. <laughs> that don't involve like sitting in a warm bath for an hour or something I, I, that like no guy would talk about. List. I know it is. All right. They just don't want to admit it, but they love hot baths. Okay. I, I, that was not, I did not mansplain anything to you, right? Okay. Thanks. Okay. No, that was good. Um, but so here's my thing about self-care. Because I thought about this because uh, I think about this all the time because I often see people <laughs> because spending... you're a woman and people no no no, no I don't mean about, self care no, no I don't mean time. self care I think about the fact that people often spend money and or ridiculous amounts of money on things because they think it's going to make them happier and that is one of the like number one ways that I have been able to save so much and been able to reduce my cost of living is because I really truly understand what makes me happy. And I and for me, I know it's not 
with the exception of the car that you can't stop bringing up, though I just brought it up this time. <laughs> it's not it's not things that cost a lot of money. Like it's simple things that make me happy and that I enjoy. But what I think is interesting about self-care is like when people get tired, stressed, et cetera, it's when they start often making bad financial decisions. It's when they decide like, oh, I'm going to eat out and I deserve it. I'm, you know, I, I'm going to stop by Starbucks. I'm going to pick up a dozen donuts, whatever. Or I'm going to buy something. I'm going to buy a really expensive handbag or purse or, you know, X, Y, Z. And a- Angela Subaru. Buttimer on that. <laughs> no, we, there's a bunch of functional reasons. But Angela Buttimer on our, on our episode around the psychology of money a few weeks ago talked about she made some reference really briefly to somebody who thought self-care was like buying a six hundred dollar pair of boots and she had, was trying to explain to them like that's not self-care um, doesn't mean that's not something that might make you happy in some way but what i think is interesting and i'm i'm you know i'm maybe not going to do justice to how i verbalize this many of the things that cost a lot of money are actually a distraction from what's really happening in your life and are an avoidance of what you really need. So I I use that example to say, you know, when you're eating out or going through the Starbucks drive through or whatever and, and doing all these sort of gluttonous things because you work so hard and you're tired and everything else, those things just make you feel worse, right? They, then there's an immediate gratification of like, you know, when that donut hits your mouth or whatever that it makes you feel better. But like an hour later, you feel worse. The next morning, you feel worse. And so it, it's just getting to this realization that A, self-care is really important and B, it doesn't need to cost a lot of money. And one of the things that I think about when it, re- when it comes to self-care is something I heard a you know motivational speaker at a former company's uh, leadership conference. And I can't really remember most of what the guy talked about, but one of the key principles was that when you feel drained or stressed or overwhelmed, you need to do something that rejuvenates you, that gets your energy back. It is not buying something. It is not spending money. It is doing the activity that gives you your energy back. And so that's what we're really going to focus on because those things are free. Buying $600 pair of shoes does not give you your energy back. Going for a run, going and doing something that you really enjoy, some activity, that gives you your energy back. That helps you get through stressful situations. And so that's what I think about when it comes to self-care. Also because it's free. Yeah. No, no, I love it. It's uh, spot on. So let's talk about some ideas and ways for people to practice self-care on a budget. We're going to just run through a lot to try to, again, just remind you that there's so many things you could do. Think of what makes the most sense for you and what kind of gets you excited. And like Mike said, what rejuvenates you? Because it's going to be a little bit different for everybody. So this is really meant to be some ideas and some thought starters and the things to remind you that this doesn't have to cost any money or very little money. And Mike's going to add his uh, dude explanation on the end of uh, many of these too. <laughs> when I say when I say taking a hot bath, I'm excited to hear what you have uh, to dudeify that experience. Yeah, take your weekly shower. That's what a dude would do. <laughs> <laughs> go go shave, maybe. <laughs> right. Pluck the hairs from your ears or something. Only you know? if you're an old dude. Yeah, I don't know, that can happen to 30s and 40s. You might still be too young for that, but that can happen to uh it's going to happen to you soon, man. All right, we are Someday your wife's going to be getting on you with some tweezers and being like, "Uh just just don't move for a minute." <laughs> All okay. right. Number 1 is not involve tweezers. Number 1 is uh we're not really going to number these, but let's just start. Exercising or getting outside. So, going for a walk, going for a hike, exploring a new place around you. Like we live in Atlanta. There are so many places that I've never even been to where I could drive 10, 15, 30 minutes and feel like I'm totally out of the city and in a new place and exploring it. And it's a great activity with kids, gets them off their off their screens and and running around and having a good time. And it's it's just such a good thing to just, you know, it could be a short walk in your neighborhood or it could be a longer hike somewhere, but just getting outside can be a, a huge thing to kind of like you know, refresh you and rejuvenate you. It is a scientific fact that humans benefit from being in nature. Go walk around a park, listen to the birds, look at the trees. You will feel better. Even if you're not an outdoorsy person. Yeah, I was going to say, even if you think, some people are like, hate the outdoors. So it may not be going for a run or something super physical or intense, but it might just be going and like sitting on a patio and listening to the birds or, you know, 
just sitting outside for a little while. The next thing is eat healthier. And this one's really important because I think a lo- what a lot of people do when they're stressed out is they're going to go out for dinner because they'll think they're too busy or they want to treat themselves to a nice meal. They will buy food. They will buy drinks. And really, you need to be doing the opposite. You should be staying home, eating healthy food, eat vegetables, make sure you're eating real food, not processed food, drink lots of water. You will feel better. Just like it's a scientific fact that people feel better in nature, it is a scientific fact that if you eat vegetables and drink water, you will feel better. Your body will respond better. Agreed. And and again, we're not like perfect. We don't, I don't eat perfectly all the time. Like I had a big old salad and then a bag of uh, uh, Voodoo Zaps potato chips uh, for dinner. And, you know, it, it's all a balance, right? It's, you know, I eat healthy most of the time, but I have days where I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to go eat something really unhealthy. Like I know you had, uh, you ordered in Mexican and margaritas tonight, Mike, and like, that's okay to do. And you probably, the way you felt right after that meal was a lot like heavier and kind of fuller than you feel after like a home cooked healthy meal. What point are you making right now, Maggie? I'm not sure. You can cut that out if you'd like. (laughs) Okay. Next one is be a kid with your kids, someone else's kids or some other adults, but like be silly and go do something that's kind of silly and fun. And like, if you have kids, I spend so much time kind of often like managing my kids and trying to get them to do things I need them to do. But like just spending time being a kid with them and being silly. And if they're playing outside in the sprinkler, like run through the sprinkler with them. They think it's so funny and, you know, chase your kids around with some water guns or water balloons or actually get in the swimming pool with them at the pool and play with them. And it's something that I know when I'm really stressed can really like remind me what's important to me first off. But also it's just kind of like everything like gets a little looser and I, I kind of have some fun and forget about crazy other things in my life sometimes. Maggie, I think we need to clarify something. If you are going to be a kid with someone else's kids, make sure that their parents know you are doing this. I meant like a family member. <laughs> don't just find yeah, like, random kids and start yeah, playing yeah. with them. You will get arrested. Yeah, don't do that. That's inappropriate. But like, yeah, no, just, you know, like I meant like, you know, my brother doesn't have kids, but like he can come over and play with our kids when he wants to have, you know, uh, let loose for a little while. He can do it. You can do it whenever you want, by the way. <laughs> okay, next one, your favorite. You should cover this one, Mike. Uh, take a hot bath or a cold shower. I don't like shower. the way you. I don't. I don't Whatever like the way you're you say. into. I'm, I'm not into either love, of these. Some people love taking cold showers. Like we, my husband and I went through a whole thing of like it's really refreshing to take a cold shower. Have you ever done it? Uh, yeah, it's horrible. It's super hard to do, but it bring it. There's like all this like scientific evidence about the benefits of it. Anyways, it can make you feel amazing. But like take a hot bath, do something relaxing, go lock the door and, you know, I like to take a hot bath and like watch a show on Netflix or something. And lo- I have to lock the door because somehow my kids always come in. And it's just like one of the most relaxing things to me. What's your version of taking a hot bath, Mike? Uh, I'm not sure I have one. That's like a this very... This is like when I ask you how you splurge and you're like, I don't know what splurging means. That's a little bit... De- I mean, what's the, equi- I what's the, what's the <laughs> mic equivalent of taking a hot bath? Like what? What if you? Hey, let me ask you a question. Okay. If you're, if you have nothing you need to be doing, or, or I tell you, like you can't work, you can't work on the podcast, you can't work on your job, and your kids and wife are gonna leave for an hour or two, like what would you sit and do? Play Xbox. Oh, okay. There you go. That's your equivalent of a hot bath. The thought of playing Xbox to me sounds terrible. Not how I want to hang out. Now, if you like do a crossword puzzle, that would be very exciting to me. But let's keep going. Hot baths and crossword puzzles. Hot bath and Xboxes. Ooh, a hot bath and a crossword puzzle. That sounds great together. Yeah, you should try it out. You're welcome. I might do that tonight. It's Friday. All right. Next next item. I hear people talking about this all the time. I have never tried it. I'm not sure I ever will, but people swear by it. Write down things that you are grateful for or some other process of self-reflection can be very beneficial to your well-being. It can be very beneficial. And I don't like you hear, I don't like hearing you say you will probably never do it. So let's do it right now. Mike, I want you to tell me three things that you were grateful for today. I am grateful that my family is safe and pretty happy with the the situation. I am grateful for a 
job that is still enjoyable and people that I work with. And I am grateful for Maggie's pointing to herself on camera. I wish you could see me. I'm pointing to myself. Like, Of course, Maggie. I am grateful for you and this podcast and all the hard work you do on it to make it possible. Was that really what you were going to say for number three, though? I don't want to I don't want to sway you. No, that was number three for real. Okay. Well, that's great. But did that feel good to you in any way? It did feel kind of good, mostly because you were sitting there just smiling from <laughs> ear to ear. That made me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, recording a podcast with a friend should go on the self-care list. Honestly, like spending time on a hobby, which is what we would put this in the category of for us, is it wasn't even on our list, but it should be on on the list. Yeah, I totally agree. Okay. So like we said, writing down things you're grateful for. Another one is just like reading a book. So if, if you enjoy reading or maybe it's listening to an audio book or a podcast or something like that, Go sit somewhere alone and get a little bit of quiet time. Ask your partner or whoever to just like, you know, take the kids and give you 30 minutes and just sit and read in a quiet place alone can be incredibly rejuvenating. What happened? How rejuvenated do you feel after reading? What are you at? 55 books now for the year? (laughs) I'm at like 27, but who's counting? (laughs) You must be just. I I have a discount the other day. I feel really good when I read because I love learning new things and it just feels good. So I do feel rejuvenated after I read. All right. Next item. Turn off social media. Put your phone down. Everybody knows how addictive it is. You go down rabbit holes, especially if you're on social media and you start comparing yourself to other people's lives, even if it's subconsciously. This is not a way to practice self-care. So put your phone down for a little bit. Angela mentioned this on that psychology episode. Remember, she said there's studies that like within a few minutes of being on social media, like anxiety, depression, like all these feelings kick in. And so, yeah, it it can be it, it may not you may not realize it at the time, but getting away from that can be incredibly helpful. Related to that meditation, if you do meditate can be really helpful. And if you don't meditate and you are stressed or have any sort of feelings of anxiety or overwhelm, Meditation is one of the number one things you can do to help short-term and long-term. And one of my favorite things about meditation, Mike, is guess what? Um, It's free. Oh, it's free. I I should have seen that coming. I mean, it is. It's like if I told you there was something you could do that would make you feel better and would cost you no money, why wouldn't you do it? So anyways, I'll get off my... uh, my thing about meditation, but I'm obsessed with it and it's got amazing benefits. The next one and one that I practice a lot is just to sit quietly and read or consume some sort of media that really speaks to you, that you enjoy, that's one of your favorites. There's a lot of different channels that I subscribe to on YouTube for like DIY stuff where people are making like things Matt or yeah, experiencing him. the outdoors, talking about topics that are interesting to me. And so it is an important part of my day at multiple times during the day where I will sit in the corner of my, my living room as far away from the kids as possible. Cause you know, no matter where you are, they will come find you, but I they will like sit you. with them and I will, but I'll sit in the corner, have some coffee and read something or watch something that I enjoy. It is just a critical part of my day, an important part of self-care. What is the name of that YouTube channel with the guy in the woods in Canada? My Self-Reliance. Oh my gosh. We will put a link in the show notes to this. I actually was texting with him trying to get him on the show, but he has like a really rough internet connection and was interested in doing it. So who knows? But he lives like out off the grid in the middle of nowhere in in Canada, right? Mm -hmm. And it is just amazing. Like you'll watch a video of him just like chopping wood and prepping something for the day. And it's like you just you're mesmerized by and they're like forty like, minutes long. Oh of yeah, him it's just like, like in real time, around, like yeah, taking like a care time of his lapse. house. Yeah, and his dog. He's like you know throwing the stick to his dog. Yeah, he's you know cleaning some piece of equipment. He's doing laundry the like old fashioned way because they don't have like a washing machine. And it's just it's fascinating. Like you can't stop watching it. I mean, we I even like would start playing it for my husband, and we're like we just play it in the background while we're doing stuff, and it's just like great to watch. Okay, next one is. Get a massage. And massages can be really expensive if you go to a spa or a you know massage place. But you could get your partner to give you a massage. You can return the favor to them also. 
And it's just, you know, it's another thing where it's like you think that self-care of getting a massage has to cost you, you know, $100 or $150, but it doesn't. There are free ways to get massages. And I'm suggesting you get it from someone that you're like intimately involved with, to be clear. (laughs) That's the free way, I mean. And if you want to take it a little further, another great way to practice self-care is intimate time with your partner, whatever that might look like to you from just cuddling on the couch to wherever that may lead. Do you know what Netflix and chill means? Uh, Yes. It made me think of the next one when I was talking about cuddling up on the couch. Because when I first heard the term Netflix and chill, I thought that it literally meant like Netflix and chill, like hang out. Mm -hmm. And then I learned that it meant something else. And isn't it really uncomfortable when like people use it and they don't know what it means? Uh huh. Especially when you're like older, like we are, and then you realize, oh, the teenagers are using it very differently than how I meant it. So right. I just like to watch Netflix and hang out on my couch. I had a boss who used to like say it to people without knowing what it meant. And it was just, he was kind of an awkward guy anyway, but it was just very uncomfortable to listen to him like suggest people like do this on business trips, like in their hotel room. <laughs> and I'm just like, dude, just, just yeah, cut stop. it out. Stop. <laughs> but anyway, speaking of Netflix, Kind of the most obvious one, we're covering it last, but I think the first thing that come to mind is just like, sit on the couch and watch a movie that you like. If you have a favorite show. Good rom-com. If you are into rom-coms, sci-fi movies, the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy, if you are into that like How long is that going to take me? 12 hours. Oh, gosh. I can't handle 12 hours. I have the entire extended Blu-ray disc set. You want me to let you borrow it? I I, um, I really appreciate you offering. I don't have a Blu-ray player, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would totally take you up on I that. I will let you borrow my Blu-ray player. Maggie, Ooh, I feel like... I don't like have like a hookup for you it do. or something. You do. I have a long enough HDMI cable. Maggie, I feel like you should, in an effort to just better understand your friend, Mike, watch the Lord of well, the Rings trilogy. You know, I just saw the first Star Wars movie like a few years ago, like... When I was with my husband, I had never seen any of the Star Wars movies before. And he finally like convinced me to watch them. And like, it was like a, it was a commitment. I did it out of love for him. So, I mean, I guess someday when the quarantine's over, I could try to watch it for you. Well, now that you're on a four day work week, maybe I need my kids to go back. I need my kids to go back to school before I could commit to Lord of the Rings. But once they go back to school, I promise you, I will watch Lord of the Rings. Yes. I'm making a note. Okay. Yeah, that's a fair trade. I'll take 12 hours of Lord of the Rings trilogy in exchange for kids going back to school. Perfect. Okay. Another idea is to dance. Dancing makes people so happy. I love to dance. Do you like to dance, Mike? I don't. I like to dance like nobody's watching and if nobody's watching. I will dance in front of my kids. I will dance in front of my husbands. I will dance in public if I am inebriated, like at a wedding or something. But I'm a terrible dancer, but I love to dance and it makes me so happy to just like let loose and dance. Um, If you don't want to dance yourself, you could watch TikTok for a little while and watch other people dance because I also think that is incredibly enjoyable. You ever watch TikTok, Mike? Never. Okay. We'll get you on that soon. Once I watch Lord of the Rings, I'm going to have to get you to watch some TikTok videos. All right. That's the deal. I'll do that. We're going to do some uh, Friends on Fire TikTok videos soon, by the way. They're coming. We'll we'll talk about it. It's on my list. It's on my fifth day. It's my fifth day assignments. I'm going to work on TikTok. The last thing on our list is to sleep in or just to sleep more. If this is a struggle for you, then plan ahead. Let people know that you are not to be disturbed. (laughs) Like work it out with your partner to wake up and take care of the kids. If your kids are old enough to respond to instructions, mine are not, (laughs) tell them to leave you alone before a certain time. But sleeping in, getting more sleep, being well rested, it is one of the easiest and most impactful ways to take care of yourself. Yeah, there's there's a lot of creative ways to deal with this. Like when you were joking, your kids aren't old enough to deal with themselves. My kids are now. And there used to be a phase where they were even younger, where we would Uh, If we really wanted to sleep in one morning on a weekend, we would leave their devices out for them, like their screen, like their iPads with like a note that was like, you can watch TV in the morning. And then we were like, they would not bother us till forever, basically. And now they can like make themselves breakfast too, if they need to. So it's clutch. I mean, you got to kind of like remind them that they know how to make themselves breakfast because they'll every morning they come to us and are like, can you feed us now? And I'm like, "You, you, you could get the cereal yourself if you wanted to. 
There's fruit. There's yogurt. There's 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 shredded fruit, right? As we discussed <laughs> last episode. Okay. So I think the idea is there's tons of different things you can do, right? Like it depends on what you like doing and figure out what matters to you and make time for it and make it a priority, right? Like you've got to plan for it. It's not something that is just going to happen magically if you're busy, right? Like you have to be thoughtful. You have to tell your partner, communicate to them and say, Hey, I'm really stressed. I need a minute to myself, right? Like I've had a rough day. Can I just get these 45 minutes to myself? And then I'll, I'll deal with this and we can take turns on dealing with the kids tonight or whatever it might be. So I think you also have to be very thoughtful about planning ahead and scheduling this stuff into your day and scheduling random days off. I think that's another great idea too that I often encourage my team to do at work is like, look two weeks ahead in your calendar and just plan a day off. Like you probably have the vacation time, you probably have the personal time and just, you know, make some time for you. And that used to be one of my favorite things to do back when the kids were in school is to just take a weekday off by myself when everybody else went to work. That's no longer an option because I can't escape anybody right now, but someday again, that will be back as a self-care option. And while a lot of these activities would take some planning and communication with your family, a lot of them you can build as habits into your daily life. Getting up in the morning and exercising or exercising in the evening, having a cup of coffee and reading the newspaper for 10 minutes before you start doing something. If you start doing this and find enjoyment from it, it is very easy to build it into your routine throughout the day. That's a great point. And take care of yourself throughout the day, every day. That's a great point, Mike. Okay, should we do our top three takeaways? Let's do it. Okay. Number one, prioritize self-care. So like we said, figure out whatever it is that matters to you the most and make some time for it. Number two, realize that good self-care doesn't need to cost money. And I would go so far as to say the best self-care doesn't cost money. I was literally going to say the exact same thing. I love it. We are like synced up, Mike. Mm -hmm. Number three, commit to spend more time on self-care right now. As a follow-up from this episode, go block some time on your calendar. Go tell your spouse or partner, whoever's in your life, or if, if you live alone, just commit to yourself that you are going to, you know, block this hour for you or this afternoon or 30 minutes in the that you want to try 30 minutes every morning this week or whatever it is. And Commit to make that time and to block more time for self-care because it can have such amazing benefits and it, it just can make you a happier, nicer, more balanced person. And it's so important, again, especially now. It's a crazy time we're going through in the world and you got to prioritize your self-care. And if you have chosen to listen to Friends on Fire as your form of self-care, thank you very much. And good for you. That is awesome. Okay, I think we're going to do uh, Mike's Minute on the Mic this episode. I know we don't always do it. Okay, is this going to be related to like hot baths or something that I just can't articulate? Um, have you ever, this is not the formal question, but since you brought up hot baths, have you ever taken a bath? <laughs> <laughs> you I'm mean serious. since I was a kid? Well, no, 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 sorry. Yeah, I'm sure you did when you were a kid. Uh after the age of 18, have you ever purposely taken a hot bath? Uh, Other than getting in a hot tub, that doesn't count. Okay, you will be surprised to hear this. I have taken a ton of baths, oh. but they are all for athletic injuries. Oh, are so, they like cold, like ice baths? So I'm either taking, and this was when I was like still playing lacrosse either in college or I was playing lacrosse post-collegially as well. I was having injuries That's all the time. That's a big word, post-collegially. Well, I, Keep going. I, I think it's a real word. But I was I would take hot baths or cold baths depending on what sort of like bodily injury I was trying to solve. For. Okay, well let's take let's put those to the side. Have you ever <laughs> taken a hot bath like in your bathtub, not for athletic recovery reasons? I think maybe like once or twice. The impetus for it would have been because I was like sore and I needed to loosen up. It okay. wasn't just like I don't okay. do it because I like find it to be well, relaxing. This may be common because I don't, I mean, my husband, I don't think has ever taken a bath by choice as an adult. I've, I've never seen him like just like I all the time. I'm like, I'm going to go take a hot bath. And like, he, he's never said that to me. So <laughs> must be normal that I think that just turned into the Mike's minute on the mic. So we'll just, we'll, we'll wrap it up with that. <laughs> all right. 
Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for listening, y'all. If you, by the way, y'all means you guys for those not from the South. It's part of my vocabulary growing up in the South. If you've been challenged or inspired by what you have heard, please rate or review our podcast. It is super helpful and it helps other people find the show. You can also subscribe to make sure you never miss an episode. If you have thoughts or questions, we'd love to hear from you. And you can leave us a voicemail or text us at 404-981-3370 or hit us up on Instagram or Facebook. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Have a good night. Thanks, Maggie. Bye. Bye. I'm going to go take a hot bath. Are you really? I think I am, yeah. Yeah.